Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and the other day somebody was asking me that please describe the beauty of Lord Vishnu, how does he looks? <laughs> so I had gone through many pages in the scriptures and finally I found uh, in, a, in the most succinct manner the description and there are many places where you will find the description especially in Srimad Bhagavatam you will find but this is the part which I have selected to say because uh, I have read this many times and this is one of my favorite descriptions and quite well it is described here okay so we will see what is there but before seeing that uh, I will tell you who is telling this and where is this so this is there in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in the 28th chapter okay third canto the chapter's name is Kapila's instructions on the execution of devotional service that is the name of the cha chapter so basically what's happening is Kardamba Muni as we know he wanted to marry and then he had done penance for 10,000 years and then Lord Vishnu had instructed Swayambhu Manu that your daughter Devahuti should be married to Kardam Muni and then finally Kardam Muni and Devahuti got married and then out of their union Kapil Muni was born Kapila is one of the avatars of Vishnu his Vishnu himself so he instructs his mother Devahuti on spirituality on devotional service that how God looks and how to connect to him many people keep asking how to connect to God so this video is on that topic okay so third canto 28th chapter and I am starting from the fourth verse I would say there are many verses so I will be a bit fast here and I will only give the translations uh, no purports okay and there you go if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding your marriage or your career or your health or any other astrological uh, area in your chart or anything in your life then you can go to my website you will find the link of the website in the description section of this video okay and you can book a reading with me and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is always asking how does god look like oh my god <laughs> and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and now when you read this you will definitely find him okay so kardamba muni has now left and kapil muni is left with his mother okay so kapil muni is giving instructions to devahuti devahuti is sitting down and kapil muni is sitting and he is instructing his mother all right beautiful this is generally the mother instructs the son but now the son is instructing the mother so there's something divine <laughs> so what's going on here let's start 3.28.4 third canto 28th chapter fourth verse one should practice non-violence and truthfulness should avoid thieving and be satisfied with possessing as much as he needs from his maintenance he should abstain from sex life perform austerity be clean study the vedas and worship the form of the supreme personality of godhead so basically this is uh, meant for very intense yoga practitioners that is why it is meant here that one should abstain from sex this is not a uh, endorsing total celibacy in any form this means that one should only have sex for procreation and not for recreation and enjoyment and fun and degradation as it happens in Kali Yuga these days everywhere almost then the next verse one must observe silence acquire steadiness by practicing different yogic postures control the breathing of the vital air withdraw the senses from sense objects and thus concentrate the mind on the heart wow <laughs> next verse fixing the vital air and the mind in one of the six circles of vital air circulation within the body thus concentrating one's mind on the transcendental pastimes of the supreme personality of godhead is called samadhi or samadhan of the mind so when we read the scriptures we will understand what are the activities which god performs so these are known as the transcendental pastimes of the supreme personality of god like ramayana is there mahabharata is there then so many pastimes are there in bhagavatam itself so we should 
try to focus on those pastimes we should try to meditate by these processes or any other true process one must control the contaminated unbridled mind which is always attracted by material enjoyment and thus fix himself in thought of the supreme personality of god so it said here that one must try to control the mind which always gets attracted to sense enjoyment okay and then fix himself in the thought of the supreme personality of god after controlling one's mind and sitting postures one should spread a seat in a secluded and a sanctified place sit there in an easy posture keeping the body erect and practice breath control the yogi should clear the passage of the vital air by breathing in the following manner first he should inhale very deeply then hold the breath breath in and finally exhale or reversing the process the yogi can first exhale then hold the breath outside and finally inhale this is done so that the mind may become steady and free from external disturbances the yogis who practice such breathing exercises are very soon freed from all mental disturbances just as gold when put into fire and fanned with air becomes free from all impurities by practicing the process of pranayam one can eradicate the contamination of his psychological condition and by concentrating the mind one can become free from all sinful activities by restraining the senses one can free himself from material association and by meditating on the supreme personality of god and one can become free from the three modes of material nature yes material attachment okay when the mind is perfectly purified by this practice of yoga one should concentrate on the tip of the nose with half closed eyes and see the form of the supreme personality of god head wow <laughs> the supreme personality of god head here it begins the supreme person so this verse is 3.28.13 The supreme personality of Godhead has a cheerful lotus like countenance with ruby eyes like the interior of a lotus and a swarthy body like the petals of a blue lotus wow <laughs> he bears a conch discus and mace in three of his hands wow should i repeat The supreme personality of God it has a cheerful lotus like countenance. So what is the meaning of the word countenance? Let me see what Mac MacBook says. MacBook says countenance means a person's face or facial expression, okay? So it's like a lotus. Lotus like with ruby eyes like the interior of a lotus. Wow. Ruby eyes, sorry, not ruby eyes. It's ruby eyes. What's the meaning of the word ruby? I don't know. Let's see what MacBook says. Rudy means having a healthy red color okay so red colored eyes like the interior of a lo- lotus with a swarthy body what's the meaning of the word swarthy oh swarthy is dark complexion wow dark colored body you see like the petals of a blue lotus he bears a conch a discus and mace in three of his hands wow then next verse his loins are covered with a sh- by a shining cloth what is the meaning of the word loins loins means the part of the body on both sides of the spine between the lowest ribs and the hip bones that's the area his loins are covered by a shining cloth yellowish like the filaments of a lotus wow fantastic on his breast he bears the mark of shri vatsa श्रीवत्सांगम कौस्तु बहुत भाषितंगम इन विष्णु शास्त्र नाम दिस इज ऑन हिज ब्रेस्ट ही बेयर्स द मार्क ऑफ श्रीवत्सा अ कर्ल ऑफ वाइट हेयर श्रीवत्सा इज लक्ष्मी एक्चुअली श्री इज लक्ष्मी द ब्रिलियंट कौस्तुभ जेम इज सस्पेंडेड फ्रॉम हिज नेक वाओ सो वॉट्स द नेम नेम ऑफ द जेम विच लॉर्ड विष्णु हैज इन हिज नेक इट इज नोन एज कौस्तुभ मणि 
That is what I said, na. Shrivat sankam kaustubho bhasitangam punyopetam pundari kaya taksham vishnum vande sarvalokai kanatham. Next verse. <laughs> Fifteenth verse. He also wears around his neck a garland of attractive silvan flowers. What is silvan? Silvan means consisting or associated with woods. Wow. He also wears around his neck a garland of attractive silvan fl flowers and a swarm of bees intoxicated by its delicious fragrance. Wow. Hums around the gar garland. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so the ha the bees are humming around that garland yes see it's written that they are intoxicated by the delicious fragrance of the uh, this garland which is there hums around the garland he is further superbly adorned with a pearl necklace wow a, a crown and pairs of armlets bracelets and anklets armlets bracelets and anklets these these things here 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 <laughs> next verse his loins and hips encircled by a girdle he stands on the lotus of his devotee's heart he is most charming to look at and his serene aspect gladdens the eyes and souls of the devotees who behold him wow the Lord is eternally very beautiful and he is worshipable by all the inhabitants of every planet. He is ever youthful and always eager to bestow his blessings upon his devotees. The glory of the Lord is always worth singing. His glories enhance the glories of his devotees. One should therefore meditate upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead and upon his devotees. One should meditate on the eternal form of the Lord until the mind becomes fixed. Thus, always merged in devotional service, the yogi visualizes the Lord standing, moving, lying down or sitting within him. For the pastimes of the Supreme Lord are always beautiful and attractive. Wow. In fixing his mind on the eternal form of the Lord, the yogi should not take a collective view of all his limbs but should fix the mind on each individual limb of the Lord. Not a collective view on each individual limb. So then what's written? The yogi should first concentrate his mind on the lotus, on the Lord's lotus feet, which are adorned with the marks of a thunderbolt, a gourd, a banner and a lot lotus. Four things. The splendor of their beautiful ruby nails resembles the orbit of the moon and dispels the thick gloom of one's heart. The blessed Lord Shiva becomes all the more blessed by bearing on his head the holy waters of the Ganges. Lord Shiva has the Ganges on his head, which has its source in the water that washed the Lord's lotus feet. We all know the story of the Ganges, right? Ganga Devi is basically the, uh, she represents the water which comes out from Lord Vishnu's feet actually. That is why it is very holy. The Lord's feet act like thunderbolts hurled to shatter the mountain of sin stored in the mind of the meditating devotee. I must repeat this statement. The Lord's feet act like thunderbolts hurled to shatter the mountain of sin stored in the mind of the meditating devotee. One should therefore meditate on the lotus feet of the Lord for a long time. We must meditate on the feet first, you see, not directly jump to the face. The yogi should fix in his heart the activities of Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, who is worshipped by all the demigods and is the mother of the supreme person Brahma. She can always be found massaging the legs and thighs of the transcendental Lord very carefully serving him in this way. Next, the yogi should fix his mind in meditation on the personality of Godhead's thighs, the storehouse of all energy. The Lord's thighs are whitish blue like the luster of 
the linseed flower and appear most graceful when the lord is carried on the shoulders of garuda garuda is who you all know who garuda is also the yogi should contemplate his rounded hips which are encircled by a girdle that rests on the exquisite yellow silk cloth that extends down to his ankles the yogi should then meditate on his moon like navel navel in the center of his abdomen from his navel which is the foundation of the entire universe sprang the lotus system containing all the different planetary systems basically it's saying that the 14 planetary systems are within the navel of lord vishnu the lotus is the residence of brahma the first created being in the same way the yogi should concentrate his mind on the lord's nipples which resemble a pair of most ex- exquisite emeralds and which appear whitish because of the rays of the milk white pearl necklaces adorning his chest wow beautiful man i feel like reading it again and again <laughs> the yogi should then meditate on the chest of the supreme personality of god at the abode of goddess mahalakshmi so where does mahalakshmi reside write it in the comments the lord's chest is the source of all transcendental pleasure for the mind and full satisfaction of the eyes the yogi should then imprint on his mind the neck of the supreme personality of god who is adorned by the entire universe the neck of the lord serves to enhance the beauty of the kostuba gem kostub mani which hangs on his chest the yogi should further meditate upon the lord's four arms which are the source of all the powers of the demigods who control the various functions of the material nature then the yogi should concentrate on the polished ornaments which were burnished by mount mandara as it revolved he should also duly contemplate the lord's discus the sudarshan chakra the sudarshan chakra which contains 1000 spokes wow description of the sudarshan chakra is there which contains 1000 spokes and a dazzling luster as well as the conch conch is the shankha which looks like a swan in his lotus like palm wow looks like a swan swan is who hans the yogi should meditate upon his club which is named kaumodaki what's the name of lord vishnu's club write it in the comments and is very dear to him the this club smashes the demons who are always inimical soldiers and is smeared with their blood so what does lord vishnu do with his club write it in the comments one should also concentrate on the nice garland on the neck of the lord which is always surrounded by bumblebees with their nice buzzing sound and one should meditate upon the pearl necklace on the lord's neck which is considered to represent the pure living entities who are always engaged in his service then the next verse is the yogi should then meditate on the lotus like countenance of the lord who represents who presents his different forms in this world out of compassion for the anxious devotees his nose is prominent and his crystal clear cheeks are illuminated by the oscillation of his glittering alligator shaped earrings wow he has this alligator shaped earrings that is oscillating <laughs> the yogi then meditates upon the beautiful face of the lord wow now the face is here finally which is adorned with curly hair and decorated by lotus like eyes and dancing eyebrows wow beautiful a lotus surrounded by swarming bees and a pair of swimming fish could be put to shame by its elegance wow the yogi should contemplate with full devotion the compassionate glances frequently cast by the lord's eyes for they soothe the most fearful threefold agonies of his devotees his glances accompanied by loving smiles are full of abundant grace wow threefold agonies if you know what those threefold agonies are then please write in the comments 
A yogi should similarly meditate on the most benevolent smile of Lord Shri Hari, a smile which for all those who bow to him drives away the ocean of tears caused by intense grief. My God! A smile which for all those who bow to him drives away the ocean of tears caused by intense grief. So if you are crying, then you know what to do now. <laughs> the yogi should also meditate on the Lord's arched eyebrows which are manifested by his internal potency in order to charm the sex god of the good for the good of the sages. So if somebody is trying to practice spirituality, he should focus on the eyebrows of the Lord that will vanish all his uh, sexual desires with devotion steeped in love and affection the yogi should meditate within the core of his heart upon the laughter of Lord Vishnu Hasyam the laughter of Lord Vishnu is so captivating that it can be easily meditated upon with the supreme law when the supreme Lord is laughing one can see his small teeth which resemble jasmine buds rendered rosy by the splendor of his lips once devoting his mind to this the yogi should no longer see no longer desire to see anything else wow that means the perfection of your eyes is to see lord vishnu smiling by following this course the yogi gradually develops pure love for the supreme personality of godhead hari in the course of his progress in devotional service the hairs of his body stand erect through excessive joy he is constantly bathed in a stream of tears occasioned by intense love gradually even the mind which he used to used as a means to attract the lord as the as one attracts a fish to a hook withdraws from material activity so gradually the mind becomes more and more calm in the material domain when the mind is thus completely freed from all material contamination and detached from material objectives it is like the flame of a lamp at that time the mind is actually dovetailed with that of the supreme personality of supreme lord and is experienced as one with him because it is freed from all interactive flow of material qualities Thus, situated in highest transcendence, the mind ceases from all material reaction and becomes situated in its own glory, transcendental to all material conceptions of happiness and distress. At that time, the yogi realizes the truth of his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He discovers that pleasure and pain, as well as their interactions, which he attributed to his own self, are actually due to false ego, which is a product of ignorance okay so there goes the description of how lord vishnu looks and how should he meditate on him beautiful it is third canto 28th chapter you can read the verses okay so many verses i just said so if somebody has the time they can summarize how lord vishnu looks let me see who does it the best way okay there you go if you are planning to do some meditation you can start with this this is the best thing to do Not, nothing can get better than this okay so it's very easy for us to visualize a form and we can do it very easily you can see this video two three times then you will understand it more okay until next time if you are new to the channel please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know how god looks like and there you go if you want a consultation with me then please go to my website and you can book a reading there and until next time tomorrow with another video okay bye bye see you